Are you using cybergreen chemistry for your real-time experiments and getting multiple peaks in your melt curve? And are you asking yourself, is this a bad thing? Let's start with a little background. Unlike yours truly, cybergreen one chemistry is a free-floating dye. Here's how it works. When cybergreen dye is just swimming around in the tube, it doesn't give off much fluorescence, even when we zap it with a light source on a real-time instrument. But Cybergreen dye really likes to bind to double-stranded DNA, and when it does, and then you hit it with light, the dye gets excited and fluoresces. At least in theory, then, the basic idea is this. As PCR creates more and more product, the signal of cybergreen dye goes up proportionally. In practice, though, this doesn't always happen. That's because cybergreen dye binds to any double-stranded DNA, meaning every double-stranded molecule in the tube will bind cybergreen dye and add to the fluorescent signal. Because of this concern, users run melt curves after each experiment. They do this by slowly raising the block temperature from about 60 up to 95 degrees Celsius and monitoring fluorescence. As you can see, signal drops slowly until at some point it drops off suddenly to zero. Halfway down this drop-off is the presumed melting temperature of the product created during PCR. If you choose the derivative view from this drop-down menu, the drop-off gets converted into a peak. What we're hoping to see is one clearly defined peak, which suggests, doesn't prove, mind you, but suggests that you have a clean amplification of a single product. One thing you most definitely don't want to see is multiple peaks as this suggests your amplification curves are a composite of more than one product. Not a good thing. So what causes extraneous peaks? Well, really depends. Often they're caused either by nonspecific amplification or primer dimer formation. In the first case, you'll need to redesign your primers to a more specific sequence. In the latter case, you may simply need to lower the concentration of primer to discourage dimer formation, although a primer redesign may ultimately be necessary. But multiple discrete peaks are not the only thing that should concern you. Other anomalies such as asymmetrical peaks, shoulders, and unusually chunky peaks should make the user question the validity of his or her data. The problem is it's difficult to know exactly what's causing certain anomalies. So some users end up spending a lot of time repeating failed experiments under multiple new conditions or with multiple new primer sets. That's neither fun nor affordable. Still, cybergreen chemistry is perfectly valid for qPCR when all things go well. Users just need to take extra care in designing their experiments and take additional quality control steps when evaluating their data. And remember, you can submit your questions on Facebook, Twitter, or on lifetechnologies.com forward slash Ask Tacman.